and welcome to the first episode of Archaeological Inquiries, a web series that poses thought-provoking questions concerning archaeology fit for an engaging discussion. Before we get rolling, here's a little bit about your host, me. My name is Chris Carcady, and I'm a student at Brown University studying geophysics. I'm from southeast Massachusetts, I play the saxophone, and I'm a huge fan of the fantasy and science fiction genres. Speaking of science fiction, the topic I have for you today concerns the future of textual artifacts. For those of you who don't know, a textual archaeological artifact is any object that has been used, modified, or made by humans, but most importantly, contains some form of inscription or storage of information in the form of writing. Artifacts like this range from the unintentionally fired clay tablets of the Cretan city of Knossos to the forging date on the back of this quarter. From these artifacts, we are able to glean some notion of how the people who modified them lived. With Knossos tablets covered in lists of trade goods recently exchanged, or at least recently in their day, archaeologists could deduce that large-scale trade was occurring in the Mediterranean Sea in the late Helladic period. From this American quarter, minted in 2000, one can see the name of the state, New Hampshire for this case, is bordered by a date, 1788 and that does rhyme. Even without a lesson in American history, one could infer New Hampshire's date of statehood, just from this association here. Also, if you've been following Professor Alcock's interviews with Montserrat correspondent Thomas Lepard, sorry in the pronunciation, you learn that a carved date on a keystone in the Locust Valley windmill helped to confirm the age ranges suggested by nearby ceramic typology analysis. As you can see, textual artifacts can reveal a multitude of useful archaeological information, from dates of past events to glimpses into the daily lives of past peoples. However, there are some puzzling obstacles that can often separate us from the knowledge stored in these artifacts. What if the comprehension of the artifact's language has been lost to modern civilization? In the case of the Knossos tablets, English architect Michael Ventris spent years of his life deciphering the once elusive Linear B script, which was pressed into the clay, revealing their meanings in 1953, 67 years after Sir Arthur Evans' initial discovery of the script. There are dozens of languages still lost to us. Will their codes ever be cracked? Also, in order for textual artifacts to exist in a comprehensible manner today, they must have withstood degradation of time. Paper burns, stone can be worn away. This textual information has to avoid all of these. Great. Now that we have a background on the subject, here is the question I pose to you. As technology advances, new mediums of writing things down or accessing information are being invented and utilized by mankind. But to what extent will modern mediums of recording information be accessible to the archaeologists of the future? In a decade, technology can evolve countless times. For instance, the VHS tapes I watched movies on as a kid have been replaced by disc-based mediums. Even CDs and DVDs are becoming obsolete when compared to digital downloads and streaming services. Slowly, the newspaper at the front door yields to the easily modified website. Shelves of library texts are replaced by online databases. My mom doesn't even read tangible books anymore. She is an e-reader. Will hard drives be accessible in hundreds of years? Just think of the extremes you'd have to go to today in order to access a floppy disk, let alone in the distant future. How will this data survive? Should we create and store a massive database with instructions on how to access and read it, of course, for future gen generations? If so, where can we put it to avoid the destructive forces of time? How possible is it to reverse engineer a method of accessing an extinct file format? Is it the same process as for a written or verbal language? These are the questions I pose to you. Feel free to reply below, and I'll summarize all of these later on. Thanks.